Hey guys, this is the Saigami Project and my name is Andrea Tidia Verosh, aka Sunny, creator of the manga series Saigami, published and serialized in Saturday AM, um, the bi-weekly digital manga anthology. And this is another run of my live stream. And um just gonna make sure that everything is set up. In the meantime, what you can see is the main cast of Saturday AM. Um, or at least Almost everyone, I think. Yeah, we're missing Hammer, but yeah, that's almost everyone uh, from Saturday um, the magazine. Uh, this is the homepage. But of course, I'm gonna switch to my usual drawing software, Manga Studio, and I'm gonna start drawing. I just want to make sure a few more minutes is going by so people can join us. Alright, uh, we already do have some of you here. Ion Falcon, Nani. <laughs> yep, we're starting. And welcome again. It's good to see you. Uh, Soshak, hello, hello. Alejandro Sanguino, hi, hi. Grimham, hi again. Frost, hello. Good. It's really nice to see familiar faces. I guess, <laughs> more like names, <laughs> because yeah, I don't really know your faces. I, I recognize your avatars and your names, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kamnia Falabi, hello, hello, great. Alrighty, so yeah, I guess I could start just as well. Uh, Zoltan Leonard, hello there, hello, see ya. Uh, Javan Hamilton, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Hello, John Amba Gaming, hi, hi. Uh, Nero, Holly, lehet itt magyarul beszélni. Persze nyugodtan, uh, le fogom fordítani angolra, úgyhogy nyugodtan ír magyarul is. Uh, Nero asked if he can, he or she, I, I don't know, can speak in Hungarian too. And I said, yes, of course, I will translate it so everyone can understand because Hungarian is a really damn difficult language to learn. <laughs> so, yep. Let's see, I have my usual canvas here. Um, this is an XP pen uh, driving screen monitor, whatever it's called, screen display. They have so many names, I don't even know. Um, so, yeah, this is a 15.6 of the XP pen model. And, yep, um, a few days ago on the YouTube community channel, I asked um, you guys what would you want to see. Uh, in these live streams, I gave you several options. Um, actually, I, I could show it, so yeah, you, you won't have to start on the empty canvas. So we're switching to my YouTube channel. Maniku recommendation. Hmm, read something. So, yeah, here is the community channel. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but I post things here now too. So if you want to be up to date with me, then there's this part of my YouTube channel. So yeah, I asked you what you want to see and most of you voted on drawing from the viewer's request and doing studies. So I figured I can combine both. So I created a video and asked for uh, your input on what do you want to see me draw. So I know I updated this video like today, so there wasn't too much time for you to react to it. But um, I have a few comments here. I won't be able to do all of them, but I will do my best to to do a few requests or studies, or I'm gonna combine the requests with the studies. Um, if I don't pick you, please don't be mad at me. I, I really will do my best. And um, yeah, uh, you know, I can't please everyone, but I, I, I try to, I, um, you know, all of the requests are pretty cool and they will be a lot of fun. So I wanted to do or wanted to pick the request on studies and characters that I think could be most interesting or most uh, benefiting for everyone. Because, you know, many of you were asking uh, to do foreshortening and action poses. So I figured that could be pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna start with the first request. And this is going to be the request from Frost. He or she asked me to draw a set from the French manga Radiant and uh, also a study on perspective and body. So I'm going to be drawing set in a 
in a dynamic pose with uh, foreshortening and perspective. So I'm moving around with my hands, but you can't even see that. So yeah. Um, so yeah, and uh, after I'm done with set, I'm gonna pick another one. So please stay tuned, even if I didn't pick yours for the first uh, artwork. I'm not sure how long this stream will be. Judging from last time, even if I say that it's not going to go over two hours, it will probably. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, I won't have to work tomorrow, so I won't have to get up early. So yeah. Alrighty, so... Um, going to pick the pen tool I'm gonna have a sketch layer and I'm also have a cover image from Radiant yeah I prepared a little bit in ad advance so I have the reference image for set here I actually really enjoy the drawing style of Tony Valentis um, obviously he was inspired by Hiromashima just like I am so <laughs> I guess we have that in common and I'm super excited for Radiant's English release because I I read a few chapters as a scanlation, um, and I actually wanted to purchase the manga in uh, in German because I know the German had published it, and I do speak German, so I was really thinking about it. But then Viz announced that they will have it released in English, so I figured I will wait for that, and I'm super super eager to get it. Alrighty, so. As you can see what we have here, the pose is already pretty damn dynamic and <laughs> and yeah, I kind of can feel the pressure because <laughs> this is such an amazing artwork. And now I will have to try and reach this level, so wish me luck. Um, also, we have a new comment, J name Brewer, uh, Goku, I guess that's a request um, already. <laughs> uh, hi, Sayumiko. Miko. Hi. Hi again! Nice to see you again! Alrighty, so first of all, I'm gonna try and think out a pose. You know, I didn't really work in advance on this <laughs> request. Um, I kinda looked up this image in the very last minute, that's why we're kinda starting a few minutes later than expected. So I didn't really think about what pose I want to do, but I figured I want to do something that's dynamic with foreshortening. So I'm gonna do my best. Alrighty, so first I'm gonna start with a few loose lines. As you can see, the technique he's using here is pretty cool. It's something I really enjoy to use myself too, when you're kind of hiding one arm behind uh, the body. Because that way, A, it's kind of easier because you don't have to draw the wall shoulder and elbow area, which for me tends to be usually the trickiest part. And it will give um, a sort of enhanced feeling of depth for the character and the movement. So that's a pretty cool technique. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use that as well because that's that's the easiest. So I figured I could teach you how to use that. Ooh, I have a bug on my screen. Ugh, nasty. Summer is beautiful, eh? <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, Daisuke Uchiha, hello, nice to see you again. Uh, Nero, I need to practice my English too, so I guess I should write in English. Yep, that's a very good practice, like, that's how you learn. <laughs> you know, I, I learned English too, because I was forced to use it, so... <laughs> so yeah, that's something that can only come to your advantage. Right, so I'm gonna try to come up with a pose. It's kind of dynamic. Um, let's see. Uh, the very first sketch will be kind of loose. But I will try my best to explain as I go. Um, not really. Nope. I'm gonna raise that. So. What I'm trying to sketch up here is similar to the pose Seth has here. So I want to do something where one of his arm is in the foreground and there's his body, his head, and the other one is in the background using this uh, sort of spell or power blast or something. 
So at first I'm just sketching really loosely. I don't put in any details. I'm more just searching for the right composition to use. At this stage of planning, I usually erase a lot. Of course, that's pretty cool if you are doing it digitally. Um, let's see, that's Kiuchiha. I'm drawing too. I'm drawing Jeremiah from the TV show Gotham. Uh, that's probably another TV show I should be watching, I guess. Uh, that, that's cool. Let's draw together. Um, yeah, I'm sent a smiley, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Yeah, this first part is probably not as interesting as I want it to be. But first I need to come up with the pose I want to draw. Of course, uh, it can be very convenient to look at references at this stage. You can take pictures of yourself or uh, friends, your family, look at pictures online, use uh, references from other manga even. You know, as long as it's a study, it's okay to copy poses so you can learn the proportions, how the creator used the foreshortening, etc. So, so, you know, I know it's a, it's a common thing that many think that the usage of references is, is bad. That's bullshit. Like, you, you need to use references in order to improve. Copying is a bad thing. Like, if you want uh, to own the credit for an artwork, then you should cop. You shouldn't copy. Like, I just can't copy this image and say that oh, I created this awesome artwork because yeah, that's that's not how you use it. But using references is the way how you learn. So. Of course, there are many cases where someone just copies an image as it is and says that, oh, I use the reference. That's not a reference. You basically almost like traced the image. As long as it's for study and you don't want to aim, gain credit for it, that's okay. But otherwise, yeah, it's kind of a tricky thing. Arm there. Of course, I could now look up a reference image or something. I won't, I guess. And also there are um, some stuff you can get now, like, I'm not sure if you will be able to see, but nowadays they are selling these fancy thingies, like, ooh, we yeah, had this off. Yeah, you can get these kind of, I'm not sure what they are called, body chan and body cone or whatever. So these movable toy figures that you can set in a pose and that will help you. I uh, <laughs> I kind of got this because I found them on a very cheap price on eBay, but they are always falling apart, so I'm not too fond of them. And usually it's easier for me to come up with the pose instead of trying to make sure that the figure is in the right pose and <laughs> and I can draw it the way it is supposed to be. I'm just gonna flip the canvas and see how I like what I have here because so far I don't really like it. So I might just scratch the wall thing and do something completely different, <laughs> like for the pose. I can just make it work. I guess I'm a tiny little bit tired. <laughs> I've been drawing pages all day, so 
this probably won't be my fastest and most quality work, so yeah. <laughs> I see, Miko. I had one of those figures and it was utterly destroyed by my dog. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I guess then mine is in a better shape. <laughs> At least I hope the dog had fun with it. <laughs> Let me shrink this a little bit. I got the male figure as well for these figures, but actually uh, the arm broke <laughs> when I tried to switch the hands, because you know, you can switch the hands for these figures. So yeah, it's kind of awkward. Like, I only used them once. I set the figures in pose and I could do a shot from above. So for that, yeah, it was kind of useful. Because doing shots from above is very tricky. That's something you you just can't make a photo of. <laughs> or at least not easily. And I might just turn him a little bit around. Another great technique for uh, the dynamic pose is to have these sort of motion lines. When you want to practice, it's very good to do uh, figure drawings. And you know, you can just draw the human body with a few shapes, like, you know, this can be the arm, the legs, and the body. And whenever you try to put in motion in an artwork or, or a drawing, it's easy to do it like that. Like, for example, a punching could look like this. You know, it's just a few lines, but it has the motion, and it's not just a solid punching like this. It's more like a karate stance, but you know, this has more motion even in this state of the drawing than this one. So, whenever you feel like your artwork lacks dynamics or it's just too stiff, try to do uh, a small, simple sketch with these lines and build your drawing around these lines instead of trying to go for the right proportions from the very get-go. Sometimes it can help. You know, sometimes it's just changing the shot. Because, you know, when you're drawing your comics, or even just for simple artwork, um, sometimes the biggest problem, uh, the shot or the drawing lacks the dynamics, is that it's cut in an awkward place. Like, for example, what I did here, at first I only had this area for the image. And I felt like that's not good enough, so now I'm trying to play a little bit with the legs. Because then you will have the majority of the body, or even the full body. And you can bring in some more, di more dynamics. You have the usage of the legs, so... So I'm gonna try for that. And of course, it's pretty easy to do digitally because I can just drag around the image, do transformation, wrap it around, move around. But you know, if you're doing this traditionally, you can just pick up a scrap paper and uh, do some very, very loose sketches before you start to work on your actual page. Especially if you're working on, you know, an expensive paper or something. So yeah, now I'm gonna give Seth another arm. <laughs> so I want to figure out how to do this arm. Um, Anahi Avalos, uh, can you do a full tutorial on how to make your manga and clip studio paint? 
Um, I'm doing my manga traditionally. So, to be honest, I don't know how to <laughs> use some tools in Manga Studio, like that uh, tool you can use to separate the panel borders and stuff like that. I never really tried those because I'm always doing my pages traditionally. So, I can uh, do tutorials on some stuff, but not on everything because I'm not too experienced with that because I still prefer to work on my pages traditionally. But yeah, you know, the basics, like working with different layers, working with different tools, that, yeah, in that I can have. And you know, if you just keep watching this live stream, you will see me use various tools, like in the sketching phase and the inking phase, I'm only using the G-Pen tool. I just set uh, the layer color to blue, which is sketch color mostly. And as you can see, I have a very, very, very messy sketch layer. Uh, guy says hi. Hi, guy. starting to become very very messy so I'm just gonna lower the opacity and I'm going to create a new layer and we'll continue to sketch on top of it because I'm starting to get lost in the messy lines so the pose I'm kind of trying to go for here is sort of an image as if Seth was jumping to action maybe even from above Sure. I might just scrap it <laughs> and go for something completely different. <laughs> you know, many, many times when I'm working on artworks, I just completely change what I have. Even if I'm in the middle of inking, yeah, that's a very hard part because you put in effort and time into an artwork, you kind of feel attached, but then you have to scratch it. You know, if it's for the sake of the artwork, then you will have to do it. Because you know, many times it's just the whole image that is just not right. Like, you keep changing small details, but it's just not right, it's not right. And in these hard times, you have to realize that, yeah, sometimes it's just best to scrap things and start all over. Yumiko, have you ever tried other things besides Manga Studio like Photoshop or Medibang, etc? If you did, which one do you feel is better to use? I did um, still using Photoshop. Um, I mostly use Photoshop for um, adjustments, uh, for some coloring and layer techniques that I don't have in Manga Studio. I use Photoshop to clear my pages and as well to do the typesetting. 
because I don't really like the type tool in Manga Studio, so I'm, I'm using Photoshop for that. Um, so yeah, and I do have Medibang on um, my tablet, uh, the Picasso tab, you know, you can draw on that tablet too. Um, so I, I'm using Medibang on that. It's not bad, I mean, for a free drawing software, that's pretty good. Um, I do have Paint Tool Sci. Uh, I used to use Paint Tool Sci for coloring for a long time, and then I, I just stick to Manga Studio because then I don't have to switch softwares in the middle of the process. Like, uh, there was a time when I used to use like three different drawing software. Like, I used the first Manga Studio, then switched over to Paint Tool Side, did the coloring there, then did the editing in Photoshop. Uh, nowadays, I prefer to use almost everything in Manga Studio. So, yeah, but all of those are pretty good softwares depending on what you need them for. Like, even if I only had one of them, I, I could pretty much do everything, I think. Move this area a little bit higher. Move it a little bit. Yep. I think I'm slowly starting to get there. <laughs> slowly I will get the pose I want to draw. It's gonna be like a pose before punch, I guess. You can number look at time me go and on the right source for the tarot and I create him by the other thing I can keep at no call. Hmm, it's because I've been a little bit of a No, I don't like it because you've been. So, Nero asked in a hungry comment if I ever thought about uh, drawing my viewers. So, like an actual photo of them or a, a, a manga style portrait. And, you know, that's a pretty good idea. Like, whenever I'm at conventions, I do manga style portraits of people who commission me on site and you know that that's a lot of fun and sometimes I draw people who look like cute designs <laughs> like um, like I remember I once drew a girl and, and she has a really good hairstyle and she just looked like an anime character of course you know she was at the convention so probably it's not her everyday look but you know she was so fitting for a design that I even asked her if I could use her design as a character in my comics. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that uh, design for a more important character or just a side character, but you know, she, she had the looks for that. So, so yeah, drawing people in manga style can be a lot of fun. Okay, now I'm gonna make this layer disappear, and I'm gonna work with this one. Um, let's see... Uh, hi, see you, Miko. I downloaded the free trial version of Clip Studio Paint, but I don't know why I found it very confusing. I used Manga Studio before, and I thought it was much easier to use. Um, I only tried the trial version of Clip Studio, and uh, I think I only used it for like one task. Like I had to open uh, a file only fitting for Clip Studio, and I had to do some editing in that file for uh, one of the Saigami volumes. So I don't have that much experience with Clip Studio. Uh, but I know that I really like Manga Studio and I like to stick with it. Of course, you know, this is an EX version, so... <laughs> You know, switching for a, a lesser model of Clip Studio, I don't think it would benefit me, but I don't really have the money to spend on an EX version now, so yeah, I, I guess I'm gonna stick with my Manga Studio 
and maybe in the future I'm gonna invest in a in an EX version of Clip Studio and see how that will work out. Um, Joaquim Mugran, could you draw Kozu from Horion? Um, I'm not familiar with the character, so so we'll see. Um, this is not the first and last time that I will do requests, so so I guess I should start doing a list or something, or you know, you just can keep out for or look out for my videos and announcements. Next time I'm gonna announce the video sooner, so you will have time to vote and put in those comments what you would want to see me draw. So yeah, um, Norma can be janky. Hello, Sunny. Hi there. Nice to see you again. Uh, OG list. How much money does the program you're using cost, and how can I get it? Uh, I can't remember. I uh, I had the earlier version, Manga Studio Four, and I updated it online to Manga Studio Five, I think. That I did it a few years ago, so I, I can't remember. Uh, the X version is usually more expensive. Like, you know, I, I don't want to say something stupid, but I think around 150, 200 bucks USD. But you know, sometimes you can get very good deals when they are just giving you 50% off or something. So every now and then you can get it on a very, very good price. And you know, it's always worth to look out for those prices because that can get you a very, very good deal. You know, these softwares are worth investing. Of course, you can work just as fine with free softwares, for example, like Medibank Paint or Krita, or some softwares are way cheaper, like Paint all size, like 50 bucks, if I remember it well. So that could be worth it too. I know that Paint all size is very, very popular. First with the hand because this is kind of a tricky shot. I'm aiming for. I'm just drawing the basic palm area, I guess. You know, this is the bottom of the palm. This is the upper part of the palm. And I will try to to the fingers first with the thumb. Of course, you know, if you have troubles, just look at your own hands. Make a photo of your own hand. Especially when it's foreshortening, you know, you just need to use your own hands because that can be very tricky. And also, it can help you if you just first draw in where the, the basic joints of the fingers should go or where they start. And you know, here are kind of here are the knuckles and. If your fingers are facing forwards, like you kind of can see in your own fingers that how they look in perspective. So it's very hard to capture. Like it takes practice to make them look good. But you know, using references will help you. So do photos of your own hand, your family. Look up pictures online. And help you a big deal. Also, I find that the fingernails can help you as well with the foreshortening, and of course, if you draw in the joints, like many. Many artists have the problem when they are drawing the fingers that they are only drawing like two joints in the fingers. Especially, I think that's more common with shoujo style. <laughs> you know, just fingers are looking weird. But you know, if you have the right amount of joints, that can help you a big deal. <laughs> to make sure that your fingers are looking like fingers. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, let's see. Uh, normal comic junkie. Yes, Radiant. I read the first three chapters and I love it. I'm so happy the manga is becoming worldwide art from from uh, worldwide art form that everyone can do, and I can't read. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really good. I, I really enjoyed it. So, and you know, it's pretty cool. It's getting an anime, and yeah, I guess that shows the Japanese slowly starting to open up its gates because you know it's not just just the Japanese that are making quality content. The French market is huge, and not just the French market. You know, or cool etc. The Yamis to show that manga is. For everyone, from everyone. So, we do have creators from all around the globe. I think I'm gonna lower these two fingers a little bit. Yep. Uh, let's see. Zami9. Hey Sunny, how are you? I'm only calling you that because I'm nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm a little bit tired because I've been driving all day. But yeah, I can't complain. <laughs> and yeah, Sunny is my nickname, so... Of course, I listen to everything. Like, Andrea is my real name. That's like I'm using name I'm often called because... And they are confusing uh, that to be my username or my nickname because that's my username, but you know, that's stunning for my comic Saigami. Uh, OG List, how do you come up with what pose to use for your drawings? Um, first I usually try to visualize, like, what would be cool, and then I start to scribble, like, you could see me scribble for a few minutes here before I, ooh, that's too big, <laughs> yeah, that's not good, I'm gonna switch this around, and, you know, I'm, I'm just going at it, like, try under the arrows, like, like, in this case, this arm got too big, because I got zoom in too much, and I only focused on drawing the hand, and I didn't pay attention to the whole picture. And now it looked really weird. And I'm just gonna move this around a bit more. So yeah, I I try to visualize it in my mind first. Many times um I, uh, I collect reference pictures of cool poses. Um, if you know, you I, I see an artwork, I see a picture uh, with a cool pose, I save that. Uh, I have a loads of uh, reference images that I might be able to use in the future. Um, of course, I'm not gonna copy those images. I just collect uh, the angle, parts of the pose, some parts of the pose, the composition. You know, I'm not sure which famous artist was that. I probably should remember, but um, one of the famous artists said that you should copy and steal art and do it better. And um, that's kind of what you can do with reference images, like collect many reference images and you kind of create your own art from various reference images together. Like, you can use a reference image for the angle, you can use another one for the composition, another one for the pose, another one for the facial expression, another one for the background, and you kind of create a mixture of all. And that's also how you can develop your style by, by you know, kind of stealing the elements. You're not stealing the style, you're not stealing the picture, you're just taking what could benefit you and melt in, in your own style. For example, you know, I have this reference, Im reference image here. And um, 
I'm partially taking the pose because it's a dynamic leaping forward pose. So I'm kind of going for a similar pose, but I kind of twisted it around. Like um, in the original picture, Seth is leaning forward, and uh, in my image, he's more uh, bending behind, like um, he's putting in his wall back in the movement, in my case. But it's still kind of similar, I kind of used the image as a reference, but it's not the same. So this is how you should be using references for poses, for example. Um, let's see, normal comic junkie. Also, Sunny, could you draw Tuna from Reborn? Uh, like I said, I have to create a list of requests <laughs> and see what I will draw in my upcoming videos and next. Like, even today I plan to do another request, at least. But we'll see how much time I will spend on set, because so far I'm spending a lot of time on this guy here. But yeah, it's... A more difficult pose, so no wonder. But yeah, like I said, this is not the last time I'm doing requests, so stay tuned, don't give up. Comment often and I might pick you. Like, there will be times I will pick random, there will be times I will pick based on what I feel like doing. So yeah, I picked Sad because I really wanted to draw him for quite some time. So I was happy to see that request as well. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's that's a good character to put in charge of a foreshortening and dynamic post study. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna lower the opacity of this layer and I'm gonna create another sketch layer. And this time I will try to go for a more refined sketch because I'm almost okay with this pose now. So I will try to refine it a little bit. Uh, Nightmare King says hi. Hi! Welcome to the stream. Alright, so once again I'm gonna switch to blue color. And this time I'm gonna be drawing the face too. I'm gonna rotate the canvas because that's easier than to draw a face sideways. Turn it a little bit more sideways. Um, let's see. Grimheim, anyone here hyped for the new Willan Saga anime? Oh, I know Frederick is. <laughs> I haven't read the manga, but he's always recommending it. <laughs> So yeah, I might look into it. I mean, it sounds pretty interesting. I never read the manga though. I probably should be reading more manga because, yeah, recently I have to cut out with things. Swapping the face because I'm more comfortable drawing faces facing the left, right? This way, this way. <laughs> I never know. So, yeah, if you're drawing digitally, that's a convenient thing. You can draw the faces facing the direction that's more comfortable for you, and then you just swap it, and boom, you probably will have. 
face with good proportions. because yeah that eye is lower than the other one oopsie yeah sometimes I can mess this up <laughs> you know what I'm just gonna raise the eyes Yeah, once you develop this side to spot your own mistakes, it's, it's much easier to correct these mistakes and develop the habit that you won't be afraid to erase what you have already drawn. Even if you feel like, damn, that, that turned out perfect, but you have to erase it. Of course, it kind of breaks your heart, but you know, sometimes it's easier to just scratch something and start over. Like, I'm gonna erase the eyes here. I wasn't happy with them. Better than the previous one. I'm gonna fix up the nose a little bit. with Chase, uh, it's good, um, like me months ago, <laughs> I'm not sure what this for, but <laughs> yeah, uh, hi see you, Miko, I started to draw a fan art piece that has some Saturday M characters in it, hope I can make it nice enough to post it, oh, that's great, thank you, well, you know, just post it, even if you feel like it's not that awesome, but, you know, there's no point in not posting it. I know we will really appreciate every fun art we get. You know, it's always good practice and it can also be a good milestone. To see, you know, that you're at this level right now and, you know, you can draw something similar or even the same characters a bit later and see how much you improved. Like, I know Artists usually have this sort of pressure that you can only post perfect artworks, but don't feel like that. Like, I many, many times enjoy seeing half finished artworks and artworks that aren't so perfect by other artists. Because, you know, not all of your artwork can be perfection itself, and, and what matters is the effort and the learning process you go through by creating that artwork. Like, I know, I, I posted many artworks that just branded good, but I felt like, yeah, oh well, I did this, I worked with it, so why not? Maybe it will be encouraging to someone. Um, normal comic junkie. Sunny, if you were to make a new manga, what kind of genre would it be in action, fantasy, drama? Is this real? Um, well, I do have several ideas. Like, at the moment, I have three different ideas for a uh, new manga series. One of them is a sci fi, one of them is kind of another sci fi, I guess. <laughs> Not really like 
more of a sci-fi mystery drama-ish thing, but that's that's in a yeah, that, that's just an idea at the moment, so let's not mention that. So once we'll be um like action sci-fi, Dreamwalker, and the other one will be a sport series. Like I'm a sucker for sport manga and for a very very long time I really wanted to do a sport manga. So yeah. <laughs> I think if I had to pick which series to start right now, if I had the chance to start a new series next to Saigami, that would be the sports series. I would be really happy to work on that. Of course, it will be very, very difficult because I think sports manga is very hard to, to draw, to write and draw. Because a, if you're doing a sport manga, you need to be anatomically more correct because you know you will have to capture every movement the dynamics it's I think artistically it's one of the hardest um, when it comes to manga genres and um, of course you will need to have knowledge about the sport itself but most importantly if you're working on a sport series you have to make the characters interesting because not everyone will like the sport not everyone will be interested in the sport, but a good sports manga will have you keep reading and be interested in the sport because the characters are playing it. So, so yeah, that's that's done difficult to do. But I, I really enjoy doing sport manga and kind of test myself at the same time with it. Because, yeah, I'm seeing all these things, but would I be able to do it? I don't know. I did tons of research. I'm practicing a lot. Um, I've been working on that idea for like quite some time now, like a year and a half, two years. But I'm still not sure if I would be able to to work on it. So yeah, at the moment I'm focusing on Saigami and in the meantime I'm brainstorming about this new series and when the day comes I hope I will be ready um let's see last look Kati hey well I'm not familiar with this series but hey have fun drawing uh thank you well Radiant is a French manga series um it recently got an anime adaptation, but it's not aired yet. I think it will come out in the summer. And also it will be published by Viz Media in uh, September, I think. So far it's been pretty popular worldwide. Like It got published in Germany, in Japan, of course France, it's origin country. So yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Like I said, I, I read a few chapters, only scanlated though, because that's how I could get my hands on it in English. But once the visitor is out, I'll be sure to get this manga because it's pretty good. And you know, it always feels so good to support fellow creators. Like whenever I can, I try to be supportive of other creators too. Because yeah, that's how you can keep the industry alive. Like, you know, of course, I too read scanlations because many times that's the only way I can read some series, especially here in Hungary. Like, I had my subscription to Crunchyroll, Funimation, Viz, everything. But once I entered this country, like, all of the pages said, like, oh no, you're in this country, you have no access for these things. And I'm like, well, screw you. I, I paid for the service, I want to have access, but no, because I'm in this country, I, I can't access their content. So that sucks a lot, because depending on what country you are, you're kind of unable to get content uh, legally. Of course, you know, you can order stuff from Amazon, maybe you can get ebooks, but even that is kind of hard. 
because sometimes it comes with very very high uh, shipping fees and stuff like that so so yeah I, I won't judge people because God knows for a very very long time for me the only way to read manga was through scanlations But still, whenever I can, I try to support the creators and the original releases because that's how you can keep the market improving and alive. Um, let's see. Uh, Ian Falcon sends three thumbs up. Yay! <laughs> Uh, Grimheim shows an emoji that <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> well you can see it probably uh, Mr. Jerk dude anybody who likes Hawaiian pizza me me I, I love it like that's one of my favorite pizza like I know burn me alive or whatever but I just love pineapples on pizza I like pineapples on everything basically <laughs> so yeah I love that it's one of my go-to pizzas. <laughs> um, let's see where we are. Havan Mudali. Hey Sunny, what graphics display tablet are you using? Wacom Cintiq? Which other tablets would you recommend? No, uh, this is an XP Pen 15.6. Um, I can absolutely recommend this tablet and the XP Pen as a brand. I did a review on it as well, if you're interested more in details about it. I, I love this tablet, it's pretty good. Um, other than the XP Pen, I looked up many other tablets before, before purchasing this. I can recommend the uh, Huion, that seems to be a very popular uh, graphic tablet. Their canvas models tend to be really good. Uh, obviously the iPad. It's pretty cool and very popular. Um, it does. There was another brand, uh, Ye Yenova, I think was the name of the brand. Those seem to be pretty popular too. Of course, you know, Wacoms tend to be the most superior when it comes to tablets, but also the most expensive, so... So yeah, if someone has the finances to get a Wacom, then that's probably the best you can get. Um, but if not, you know, affordable tablets are pretty good. I also do have um, a Simbans Picasso tab, which is an Android tablet, where, which comes with a, a pen, sort of similar to an iPad or a Windows Surface. Actually, yeah, Windows Surface is pretty good too. Um, but yeah, Simbans is, uh, is a very affordable tablet. I also did a review on that, if you're interested. So for beginners, I would recommend something cheaper to figure out if it's the right thing for you and to get used to it. But yeah, once you want to take your art on a higher level, it's worth investing in something more expensive. Like, you know, this is not my first tablet. Like, this is my first screen display, but before that, I've been climbing. Uh, higher and higher with the quality of my tablet. Like my first tablet was a Genius, uh, a small one. Like I think it was an A5 size. Then I purchased a bigger one of the Genius, and after that I switched to a Wacom Intuos, and after it I switched to this display. And I don't think I will switch anytime soon because yeah, this was expensive, and it really serves all of my artistic. Needs pretty well. So, yeah, the XP pen is something I can absolutely recommend. Um, where was I? <laughs> um, Mr. Jerk Dude, the tablet looks like a Cintiq Companion. Uh, no, it's similar to Cintiq Companion, but this is an XP pen 15.6. Uh, I choose this because it's pretty flat and easy to carry with me whenever I'm traveling. Um, so yeah, it's it's smaller than other uh, screen displays, but it's not, not a companion like 
It's just uh, a screen display. The, as far as I know, the company and works as uh, a PC as well, or like sort of like an iPad. So yeah. Um, hi, Simiko. What do you think is the coolest animation anime male characters? I remember you talked about your favorite female character before. Ooh, that's a hard one. Like. I, I do have so many favorites. Like obviously I have more favorite male characters than female characters. Uh shoot. That's a hard one. Like I, I can pick several favorites from every show I'm watching. Um Let's see. Well, the first character that comes to mind the coolest would be Mustang from Fullmetal Alchemist. Like, Jesus Christ, he's he's amazing. Like, he was my favorite from Fullmetal Alchemist. Of course, I loved many of the characters, including Edward, but Mustang was incredible. Like, he was such a well written character. He was really cool, really flashy. He's an amazing character. Um Yeah, and there are so many good, good characters. Um, yeah, I pretty much can name <laughs> a favorite in every show. Like, you know, Beat, Fairy Tale, Naruto, Hero Academia. I, I can name a bunch of favorites. So it's hard, but Mustang was my first idea, so maybe in the back of my mind, he's the coolest anime character ever. And you know that bar is set pretty high because Mustang is damn cool. So, so yeah, if I, I have to pick a top, 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 then it's Mustang for me, I guess. Like I said, I have many favorites, so <laughs> if you're more interested about more characters, then ask for a series and I will name my favorites, because I like to pick favorites. I'm kind of easy to please, I always find favorites. No matter what. <laughs> in some series, I like almost everyone, like in Haikyuu, I'm a sucker for all of the cast. Like, there are no characters I hate in Haikyuu. And everyone has something I like about them. And I'm not a Fujoshi, so it's not about shipping the characters in sports manga. But I think that it's a very, very well written manga. And the character is amazing with amazing improvements. So yeah, of course the same can be said about many, many other series. Fumato Alchemist had an amazing cast too, like many of the characters are very, very likable, relatable. Um, let's see, I probably should be saving, <laughs> I always forget saving. Let's see, where was I, where was I, where was I? <laughs> where are we in the comments? Uh, yeah, I see Miko responded, it's an XP pan. Exactly. Um, let me now. Right now I'm sketching the main character of my manga that I'm working on, just in case you're interested. Good luck, work on it. Let's draw together. Um... Mr. Jordan dude asks Zami9 what's the title? Hi Simiko asks what's the story about? Uh ooh, that's that's some username. <laughs> I probably butcher it. Dice Averrancus. Um Draw Yosakura from Shaman King. I think I got that request in another video, so yeah. One day I will definitely do yo. Um OG list. I have a good story idea and I wanna start creating it. What's the first thing I should do in order to create it? Start working on it. Like, really? <laughs> that might sound like a stupidly simple advice. But uh, jump in, start writing a script, start doing uh, the characters, environment, the word setting. Just no matter what you do, just, oops, just start working on it. Because as long as you're not putting down anything, it's just an idea. And 
an ID is almost as nothing. So, if you have a good idea, start the execution. Do it. It varies. Some people like to create the characters for some people have to write a script. For me personally, it differs. Um, there were times when I started with the characters, there were times I started with the story, started with the word. It depends on the story, I think. But the gist of the idea is it a character driven manga? Is it a story driven manga? What is it that you want to tell? What is it unique about? What is the thing only you can tell about the story? All of these things will help you write and will help you start working on it if you know them. So yeah, just just start it. Don't be afraid, like everything can be corrected, everything can be changed. But as long as it's just an idea in your head, it's something that can perish in no time. And if you keep delaying it, like, oh, I'm not good enough to start it yet, I don't know about it yet, eventually you will find yourself seeing that someone else already did your idea. So, so if you have an idea, if you want to do it, start doing it. Um, Mr. George dude, yes, finally somebody who likes pineapple pizza. I know, right? <laughs> I really like it. And maybe it's a family treat because everyone in my family loves it, so. Yeah, pineapple is good. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jerry Dude, OG list, write it down. A mind map would be good. Yeah, that's. A mind map is a really good idea. And it can help you focus on writing different aspects of the story, find the connections to be the foundations of the story. That's a good advice there. Um, let's see... OG list. I like pineapple pizza too. Woohoo! <laughs> We're having a pineapple pizza fan. Fandom here, kinda? I don't know. But yeah, you're not alone. There are always people loving pineapple pizza. It's good. <laughs> Um, Grimheim, Attack on Titan, Fabs. Ooh, good one. Uh, Levi, I guess. Like, obviously, he's, he's just so damn cool. I, I really like him. Um, my other favorite would be Armin. I um, actually like characters who are smart like him, and and yeah, I, I really like his character improvement over the story. So. Armin is definitely a favorite of mine in Attack on Titan. I I liked Petra, although she didn't have too much screen time. Spoilers. I used to cosplay as her too. But yeah, he didn't have much of a presence, so it was more just yeah. But yeah, Rivai, Armin. I like John too. Like he he had an interesting improvement as well. I guess Armin. Of course, I enjoy many of the characters. I don't particularly like uh, Mikasa or Eren. They are a bit in the cringy area for me. Hanji can be too weird for my taste. Like she, she's incredible, but sometimes she's just too cringy and weird. <laughs> but fun. Alright, let's zoom out a little bit and see the wall picture here. Yeah, I'm kinda happy with this. Let's make this British. Okay, let's check the comments. Um, Zami9 writes, The title would be Eureka Valor. It's a zero to hero story about a young man who wants to be a leader of a powerful guild even though it he doesn't have set power. You know, usual stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's your usual underdog story, I guess. Um, you know, with this type of stories, execution is everything. You need good characters and a good system 
for that character or characters to work their way up. And you know, depending on how you do that, it can be very good. Because, you know, if <laughs> if you just take that story description, it could be said about many, many other world existing manga titles. Like, Hero Academia could be described with this title. Of course, Deku doesn't want to be the leader, but he wants to be number one, so that's pretty much the same. The same could be said almost about Naruto. Of course, he had the power, but he couldn't really use them. So yeah, this is the gist of a very, very successful story basics. It will all depend on how you execute it. Um, Red F manga. Do I get to pay for a request? Uh, not during this live stream, because... You know, I asked for your request um, because these live streams I want to be more fun, interactive things with my viewers um, to make sure I'm creating content you enjoy. I think it's um, it's a good thing to to give you back uh, the love and the appreciation I'm receiving through my uh, videos, the comments. Uh, all the actions you do towards me. So these requests are for free. Of course, I do commissions uh, for those you have to pay if you want to commission me. Uh, but these requests right here are for free. So I'm not charging you anything. So if you have a request, you can put it down. Uh, for this video, I'm gonna pick from the comments that were submitted uh, for the video I uploaded earlier today. There weren't too many because I uploaded the video kind of late, so I'm sorry about that. But um, I will pick request for the next videos as well, because I know there will be many. So just keep an eye out on my videos, my social media, hit the notification bell in my YouTube channel so you will be notified if I post something on the community channel on YouTube or I upload a new video, because in the future I will do videos asking for these requests as well. I think, because that allows me to prepare a bit in advance, like, you know, download reference image for the characters and stuff like that, so, so yeah. I think we can start this request thing rolling. And of course, if you want to have a more personal request, something special, something you will receive, you will keep, then you can also commission me and that will be a huge support for me as well. Because, you know, if you commission me, I will create the artwork. Wherever, however you want, you can receive the original, if it's a traditional artwork, and so on and so on. The benefits of asking for commissions. Uh, Mamsi's Turbo Wear Drive Dive... I, I can't read that. Turbo Wear Dive... <laughs> I suck with pronouncing these names. Uh, pineapple pizza feels and tastes like school pizza dip in barbecue sauce. You had pizza in school? Really? Oh, now I'm jolly. Like, all we had were dry sandwiches. <laughs> no fancy pizza in our school, that's for sure. Um. Uh, Red of Manga. Okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Like, if you knew and you don't know, just ask. I know not everyone is watching this live stream, not everyone is following me, so it's completely okay. Maybe someone else is confused about this as well, but yeah, these requests are for free. Oh, yeah, Jungle is saying the same. <laughs> uh, Grimheim writes, there was one Saiga. Uh, second like volume to remind you of Petra, you know, her looks. Oh, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I know what we're talking about. Yeah, I might have been inspired <laughs> by her looks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but I know the character, and I don't know if I was thinking about Petra while I was driving her, but yeah. Uh, Hi, Yumiko asks, how do you deal with criticism? Um, it depends, I guess. Sometimes uh, criticism is hard to deal with, especially if it's harsh 
or if it's hitting you in a soft spot. But um, you know, usually I try to find the golden nuggets in the criticism. First of all, you have to value if a criticism about uh, a thing you indeed need to improve, or is it uh, a sort of a bad criticism? That can be kind of hard to separate because sometimes you will receive criticism that's not necessarily is criticism or good criticism. Just someone saying that, you know, you suck, your design looks bad, your pose looks bad, your drawing looks bad, your characters look like this or that. That's not a uh, criticism you can build on. But, you know, if you receive criticism that has a value, that's sort of picking up and cherishing and figuring out how you can turn it to your advantage. Like, you know, uh, first of all, you have to to see if that criticism is meant to help you or not. Some people will be harsher, like, you know, Frederick from Saturday AM. He won't sugarcoat his words. He will tell you bluntly that, yeah, that's boring, that's not good, that's fanboyish. And, um, you know, I always cherish Frederick's criticism, and I made many changes based on his advice and criticism. And uh, it only benefited me. Like, there were some things I did argue in with him. Uh, I mean, it wasn't the argument, but I was uh, thinking that, yeah, I, I see your point, but I disagree. So, criticism is not something you necessarily have to follow every time. You have the right to deny. And, you know, in the end, it should be you who sees the improvement, who makes the decisions. Criticism is something that can be to your guidance, but sometimes it can also be misleading. Like, uh, sometimes people will write your criticism that's not necessarily helping you, or it's just... Uh, trying to stir you in their direction, uh, using their preferences. But that's not necessarily the best for your art, for your style, for your story. So, criticism is kind of like a double-edged sword. Um, but no matter what, you, you have to think about it as, I don't know, like a tool that you can use if you want. Like, it's up to you if you pick it up or not. Uh, but no matter what, you, you can't let it bring you down. Like, I know I received criticism that I I wasn't happy about. Like, it made me feel bad because, you know, it was something that I did disagree with and I didn't understand why a certain people is saying that. And, you know, of course it feels bad because you put effort and, and a lot of work into these things, so it's not easy to receive criticism saying that yeah, I didn't like that. Especially when it's criticism towards your characters. Because, you know, after a while your characters kinda become like your children, you get attached to them. And someone and if someone is saying that you know, for example in Saigami that oh yeah, I don't like Ayumi, I find her boring, uh I didn't like her and you know that kind of hurts, I guess, as a creator, because obviously, as a creator, you want your characters to be loved or to be hated if it's, for example, a villain or if it's a character, you want people to <laughs> to get negative emotions about. Um, but yeah, at the same time, you have to accept that not everyone will like what you do. And, and you know, you, you can't please everyone. You can try, but you probably will fail. Like, there isn't a thing in this world that is loved by everyone. Think about pineapple pizza. It's so good, but not everyone likes it. The same goes for chocolate, or cake, or summer, or whatever, even the most basic things. There are always people who hate it, who don't like it. And the same goes with art and stories. No matter what, not everyone will like it, so... You just have to make sure that you learn how to handle criticism and how to pick out 
the stuff that will matter. Um, Ion Falcon, that's the level of art I wanna be on. How long will this stream be? Um, I'm not sure. I'm already at it for an hour and a half, I guess, or no, because I started later. Uh, but yeah, I, I will want to do another request, so I'm not gonna be inking this one. Probably will make a tiny bit more adjustments, but probably will keep this as a sketch and uh, start working on another request. So probably at least one more hour. I don't know, last time it was almost three hours. I might keep going at it if you're interested. Like, you know, just write how you feel about doing these longer live streams because I, I, I'm never really sure. Like, I will be <laughs> sitting here drawing till morning to begin with. Um, of course, sooner or later I will have to uh, stop this live stream because I have to keep drawing my pages too. So this is sort of a break time for me. Um, but yeah, at least one more hour, hour and a half. I'm not sure about two, but I will do one more request. I'm gonna save this. Um, let's see. Uh, where was I? Okay, there are a lot of comments, so I'm gonna just open a new canvas. We have closed the original set image here. I already saved this. Ready. I'm gonna create a new canvas here and I'm gonna look at the other request and I'm gonna pick another request. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Just a moment. Should have written this down. Um Okay, since I didn't save any other reference images, to make things easier, I'm gonna go with the request of Haisi Yumiko. Uh, she requested uh, for me to draw Ayumi from Saigami Mai series and uh, do a study of her using her fire Saigami powers because uh, she finds it difficult to draw action scenes, especially when it involves natural elements or magic. And she finds fire harder to draw than water. So yeah, I'm gonna be drawing Gayumi using her fire powers. Alrighty. Um, let's see. Uh, of course, there are two ways to draw fire. Like I do completely differently when I do it traditionally and when I do it digitally. I mean, coloring it digitally. So... Since it's gonna be a sketch I'm drawing, I'm gonna focus on the traditional fires. But uh, I might be doing a video. I mean, I know someone already requested um, to do a tutorial on how to draw fires. So I might do a tutorial video on that and not in a live stream. Because I, I think I have a pretty simple technique to do fire. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's see... First I have to come up with a pose for Ayumi and her fire powers. Um, and since it's gonna be Ayumi, it's not gonna be as dynamic, I guess, because... Yeah, she's not as dynamic as the boys. I still can use some foreshortening, maybe. I can go for something slightly more dynamic. Mm. Yeah, I wish I had come up with this earlier. Because <laughs> now I'm kind of just brainstorming here. And I don't want to do a similar pose to what I did, so... You try to do... Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. 
Yeah, I just should start drawing or looking at the comments or do something. <laughs> uh, let's see the comments. That means I'm brainstorming. Uh, How to Bam has a Facebook group for aspiring mangakas. Oh, that's cool. Although he's, he's not making any more videos, does he? I, I think he stopped some time ago. I see Yumiko. Oh, Frederick. <laughs> I felt that he has. He was so much nicer. Well, not nicer, I mean more soft with his criticism on his last podcast. It was the first time I didn't feel scared of him. <laughs> yeah, he, he can be a really nice guy. Like, you know, he, he's just honest and very, very passionate. So, yeah. Even if he sounds mean or rude, he's doing it for the best. You know, you, you just need to get used to his style, I guess. <laughs> of course, you know, I, I know I had many, many times and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, please stop, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> because I felt like, oh my god, he's destroying me. <laughs> of course, he didn't mean it, he was just honest. And I, I think it's still better than sugarcoating words and saying just, oh yeah, sure, sure, just go, go with it, it's gonna be fine, and it's not. So it's, it's better. Um... Namzi's uh, Turbo World Dive. Scoop is a taste horrible. Like, think of Tony's pizza, but more sharper and thinner. I had to dip it in barbecue for a taste and avoid the pain. Ooh, gross. I'm happy to hear you survived at least. <laughs> um, I really liked his tone in his last podcast. It was great. That's great. I still have to catch up with the podcast. But I'm really looking forward to listening to that now. And yeah, everyone who's. Who's not familiar uh, with Saturday AM podcast? We do have a podcast. You can access it through Saturday AM site. We do have a media site. You can click it through the the main page of the homepage. And, um, and yeah, <laughs> you can listen to Frederick's podcast. Many many times he has guests, like some of our creators from Saturday AM. Uh, and yeah, he's talking about a lot of interesting stuff. Or if you want to hear his reviews, you can uh, check out the past reviews of uh, Pilot Manga, which was our talent search program at Saturday AM. If you go to Saturday AM's YouTube site, you will be able to listen to these past reviews, and you can find many, many great advice in those. So I, I can only recommend it. You know, listening to Frederick can be highly, highly motivating. Like many times, I'm doing the same. Uh, I listen to Frederick while drawing instead of listening to music or something. Um, I'm really not sure what pose to go with. I'm kind of having a brain fart right now, so <laughs> just give me a few minutes before I come up with what to draw. <laughs> I'm not sure how dynamic I want it to be, so... Similar for the toes with sad, but a completely different angle without foreshortening. But I want the focus to be on the fire. Oh, let's see. 
Okay. Uh, Tree and Clayton. Hi, Andrea, what's up? Hi! Nice to see you again. Uh, that is Avarankas. I have a great food receipt for everyone. Color, supper, tuna salad. Um, and you need this tuna fish covered in lemon juice. Mix it with boiled eggs and tortilla chips, then add black pepper. Wow, that sounds good. I'm feeling hungry. <laughs> but yeah, that surely sounds great. And I'll lower the opacity and create another sketch layer. Um, Zami, what? Not everyone likes cake? That's blasphemy. I know, right? My cousin, she doesn't like cake at all. <laughs> I still don't get it. Like, we're so close and <laughs> we have unique, I like, like, matching taste in many, many things, but she doesn't like cake. Like, I don't know. When I first heard it, I was like, you're adopted. <laughs> I don't want to speak. Especially cheesecake. Oh my god, it's been so long since I had cheesecake. <laughs> I'm starting to get hungry here. <laughs> Neon Falcon, oh cool. Frost, I love your set drawing, thanks. You're welcome, thanks for the recommendation. Or the request, I guess. I don't know, both? <laughs> I, I enjoyed working on set. I don't know, I might finish that artwork and color it. That would be nice. Of course, I have many, many other works to work on too, so you have to see. Torian Clayton, draw All Might and Deku, please. Yeah, I I never drew All Might. I, I did draw Deku a few times. <laughs> but not All Might, not yet. He he will be a challenge, so. I want to draw more Hero Academia, so. So maybe another video or live stream. Uh, this pose is nothing too fancy, it's pretty simple. Kinda like an archery pose, I guess. Oh well. Focus will be more on fire, I guess. I could have done a more dynamic pose. Huh, I really wonder. Yeah, let's go for something more dynamic. Yeah. I guess I'm just gonna put down a few scribbles to see if I can create something that's more dynamic. George do tips on word building. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Word building is a very, very hard topic, so... I usually like to create the loves um, for my word, to create the system. And make sure that it has logic. And uh, and while I'm creating laws and the rules, I'm also coming up 
debates on how to break them, what are the consequences of breaking laws, um, create the house and whys of a word, how it affects the characters, how the characters can affect the word. I don't like this. Um, so, yeah, the, there are many levels that can help you build up your word. Um, you know, the basic needs of the word and the people in it how those work together, and then the higher levels. Um, like, you know, the various systems, we politics, uh, the economy. Let me just go with this one. Yeah, I'm really not sure. Okay, now I need your comments. Should I continue with this one? Or should I do another sketch for Ayumi using her fire powers? <laughs> Meantime, I'm going to continue with the bird building tips. Um, so yeah, for example, in uh, Saigami, you know, I, I built a whole new world. So I put a lot of effort <coughs> into creating the system, um, creating the history of the world. Uh, some parts of that history were already told in uh, the first volume of Saigami. Uh, not all of it, of course. Um, okay, then I guess I will continue with this one. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. It's not the best, Arthur, but yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I created the history. Uh, had to come up with how that affected the world, the people, the system. Um, as well as, uh, you know, with the Saigamis appearing in the story, I had to create a system for them, for the order, how it works. I basically created um, a military system and an organization in order to make sure that the world... Which layer am I? Ah, oh, crap. Okay, now she's done. Working on the wrong layer. Crap, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot of hard work and um, you have to ask yourself a lot of questions. And... Why is it black now? Okay, that's weird. I'm not sure what am I doing. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's also easy to, to look up a word and, you know, question, question the system, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but yeah, look at how various economies work, how various histories affected, or various historical events affected things. And um, A, you can find inspiration, B, you can see how things work in real life, and you can use those to help build your word. And uh, I think that can be very useful if you, if you come up with something, come up with its counterpart, and see how that something can affect different things in the word. Uh, I should be probably more specific with things, but you know, for example, if you have uh, characters with powers, um, how do they fit in the world? Um, how their powers can change things, how it affects, uh, how the system reacts to it, how does it come together with the various laws, with the laws of physics of said word, uh, you know, it, creating a word is on many, many layers. And, and it's not easy, but you just have to ask questions, answer them, and build build a system.
and it will come together. Of course, there will be things that you probably will come up with as you go. Or at least I know I am. <laughs> because I, I try to be as thorough with uh, world creation as I can. But obviously I can't think of anything right off the bat. And there are things that come later on. Sometimes you create part of the world to fit your story. Uh, to serve the story, be it creating um, an obstacle for the characters, be it anything basically. But you know, it, it's good if your word can uh, serve uh, the writing of the story. It can help you a lot when it comes to character development or anything, planning the story. And sometimes you will have to work the story around the world you already built because it's no good when you're breaking your own laws or the rules of the world. So be careful with that too. Um, yeah, I see Miko, I think that one is fine if you feel comfortable with it. Yeah, I will tweak it a little bit more because I, I felt it was too stiff, but we'll see. Um, Mr. Jertu must layer one. Ready, thank you. Uh, Grimham looks good. Zami. I read the first two chapters of Saigami and I love it. Reggie is my favorite character so far. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm really happy to hear you enjoyed it. And I hope you will be able to read more of the chapters. Because, yeah, I'm working my hardest on it, so. It's always much appreciated if you read it. Reggie is, I guess, pretty popular. Like, he was third in the character popularity contest. And yeah, I'm not sure how much you can hear from the song playing right now, but that's actually Reggie's theme, created by Matthias Sture, a German music composer who's creating music for the channel. sure about her legs. So I'm gonna scratch this part. I'm just not sure about the wall drawing, so... <laughs> this feels weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's still like an archery pose. I mean, sound six in a good way. Yeah, I say I, I really like it. He did a great job.
Oh, I see my course. Looks so pretty already. <laughs> I don't really think so just yet. <laughs> like, I just flip the canvas and yeah, her face is off and it's just not right. Just yet, but we'll get there, we get there. <laughs> Of course, this is just a sketch layer, so I still will adjust her big time, I guess, as her things looks. Yeah. <laughs> she really need a lot of tweaking. messing up the legs. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of tired. Oh well. I'm gonna move her around a little bit and try to fix her. Maybe I can just go with usual archery pose and have her legs be kinda more straight. Maybe that's the easiest. Not dynamic though. <laughs> Style really resembles your Mashima's. Then again, you love fairy tale. <laughs> I do, and you know, before fairy tale, I I loved Rave Master, his previous work. So, and only night, he's a huge favorite of mine, and I'm probably highly inspired by him. And I just can't wait to read his new manga series. Of course, I try to make sure that my artwork don't copy or my art style doesn't copy his. But I know I'm, I'm highly influenced by him. <laughs> um, let's see. Rallyman Larson, what is the most difficult part? To draw on the body. Right now her legs are the most difficult part for me. Um, yeah, legs can be tricky. Uh, I often have trouble with them, but other than that, what I find the most difficult is this area. Uh, the shoulders, uh, how they connect to the chest and the back area. I usually have trouble with these two and, and the angle of the legs. I'm pretty confident with the hands, although <laughs> in this sketch phase her hands look very very iffy. <laughs> but um, but yeah, this shoulder area and, and the legs can be the hardest for me. Um, let's see, where was I? I wanted to move this back a little bit more in. Giving her a little bit more curves. She's not that curvy. Like, I don't intend to ever go. Hiromashima is 
Hero Mashima ish. <laughs> when it comes to driving the female body. But yeah, a tiny little bit curves on the hip area can help. Uh, I see Yumiko. I thought that Hiro Mashima was doing a sequel for Fairy Tale. Um, he's not even drawing it. He did uh, some tweets about the sequel. He's uh, he's providing the storyboards, I think, or at least guidance for the story. But uh, another creator will draw the sequel. Um, so so we'll see how it will turn out. He's working on a new series uh, titled Eden Zero, uh, and it will launch next week. So, and it's pretty cool because it's gonna launch in five different languages simultaneously. So yeah, I'm, I'm super eager to get it. I, I don't even mind if I have to pay per chapter because I'm pretty sure uh, Kodansha will release the chapters like that. They they are doing it with a few other series as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm super eager to read it. And I don't want to read scanlations. <laughs> because I, I really want to support his work. And and I, I can only hope that Eden Zero will be good. Of course, I, I still miss fairy tales, so the bar is kinda high. Like it will be kinda hard to get attached emotionally to characters as much as I was emotionally invested in fairy tale characters. We'll see. I'm still not happy with her legs. We're getting closer to the phase where I'm just gonna crop the image. <laughs> and that would be like running away, so probably not. Okay, I need to fix up her head and her arms. <laughs> So I'm gonna create a new sketch layer. I'm all over the city and this. I'm gonna try to fix her up. Um Mr. Jerk Dude. Remember when the creator of Solitaire made a manga about firefighters? I think it's ongoing. Uh yeah. As far as I know it's still ongoing. It's a fire force in English, I think. I read the first, first chapter for sure, maybe another one after it. I don't know, like, few chapters were available for free online on Kodansha's site. So I read those. Um, I'm not sure. The art style is cool and all, but I never really got hooked on the story. Yeah, I guess it's always hard for creators to create another big series after they just finish a hugely popular series like Solitaire was, and this fairy tale is, or was, is, was, I don't know. But you know, I think, well, they are different, but you know, after Rave Master, Hiromashima had a few one shots that were kind of missed series. <laughs> God. Your eyes are so wrong. Um, but yeah, Fairy Tale became way, way more popular than Rave Master ever was. And it really grew on me for sure. Even though at first I was like, yeah, I don't think I will like this better than Rave Master. Because fairy tale seemed so silly at the beginning for me. Like I really enjoyed the drama in Rave Master, and um, I liked how he got the boss to kill off the characters. 
and I thought that that factor was missing from fairy tale. Even in the end, I still wish that fairy tale would have been a bit more bossy, like Grim Master was. I don't want to spoil anything if you know there might be people who only seen the anime, and the anime is not finished yet. I see you, Miko. It inspires me to see you redraw and change your drawing so much. I feel better when drawing after noticing professional artists also struggle with getting the image they want in paper. I know, right? <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, for a very, very long time, uh, I always felt so stressed out uh, seeing speed drawings from creators because, you know, you just look at their drawings and they, they don't even erase, they don't make correction and I always felt super inferior to them and uh, even when I was doing my own drawing videos I was super stressed out because I felt like okay the camera is recording I, I can't make any mistakes like people will be watching and I have to be perfect and and god that was a struggle and uh, you know, now I, I'm, I'm comfortable enough uh, with drawing in front of the camera and, and you know, it's, it's really great to hear that it inspires you and makes you feel better to see that, yeah, everyone struggles at times, we, we all make corrections. Of course, you know, if you want to do a fancy speed drawing, you probably will skip the part when, where you are scrolling with your sketches or where you make the corrections. Because if you take a look at speed drawings, many times the most difficult parts are just cut or skipped over. But uh, yeah, I hope the fact that you can see me draw, make mistakes and corrections like this can can help you with your own art. And I, I think it's really important to realize that yeah, mis mistakes will be part of the drawing process and. And don't feel bad if you have to erase things or have to start everything anew because sometimes it just happens. My name was again, I'm driving her hand starting with the palmaria. This time it's more of a triangular shape because you know her hands will be kind of like this, like this, it's the right hand, so yeah. I'm not even sure if you can see my hands on the camera, like, uh, I have to figure out something out about that. Um, let's see... I see you, Miko. I'm just so very tired on the always Nakama power on this Shonen manga lately. I hope they start to whip out some new strategy for the sudden power-ups of characters in shonen mangas. Yeah, that can be highly annoying many many times. Like sure, uh, there are some scenes that I really enjoyed even though they had sort of an Akama power-up but they were done right. But yeah, many 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 times it just feels like a plot armor or something and it can highly ruin. Uh, the story or take away the stakes, the tension. So yeah, it's I think it's a it's dangerous things thing to do. Nakama powers. I know where it is coming from, and sometimes I'm a sucker for Nakama powers. But many times I just wish that no, please no no Nakama power ups.
of course, you know, sometimes if it's kind of justified, like... Yeah, I don't want to spoil it with anything, so... <laughs> You know, if it's uh, if it's characters lending their power, actually like physically lending their power in order to be the bad guys or something, I would call that a justified like my power up. But you know, sometimes it's just oh, I can think about my friends and yeah, I can do anything. Like that's bullshit. <laughs> of course, sure, emotions, friendship, and love are the biggest powers. I think it sometimes it's more interesting to see. <laughs> what if it's not? <laughs> um Mr. Jerry Dude. I never read a volume of Saturday AM. Is it manga chapters? Is it like in the Shonen Jump magazine? Yeah, Saturday AM magazine consists of uh, various installments of our manga series. Um it varies how many manga we do have in an issue. Um, usually it's uh, between 3 and 6 various manga series in an issue. Sometimes it's more. And uh, next to the manga chapters, we do have uh, interviews with interesting people uh, from the manga anime industry, some other creators. It, it varies. And yeah, some, some other content, sometimes you do have uh, reviews or other interesting things that uh, that might interest or, or targeted audiences. You can read some of the issues for free on the homepage. So if you go to our homepage, you can find a link to that in my profile. Um, you can read some of our latest issues for free, some of our earlier issues for free. And you know, if you like what you see, you can subscribe to the magazine for just five dollar for a whole year, and that will get you twenty issues of the magazine, meaning thousands of pages of manga and other exclusive contents. So yeah, and right now our latest issue is issue eighty-eight. And the next one will come out this weekend, issue 89. It will have Z Forever on the cover. Z Forever is a returning series. It's been away from the magazine for, for quite some time. And I think Mark Reed did a really great job with the cover. Like I really like it. It's kind of sad because, truth to be told, I was supposed to be on the cover. I was supposed to be in the issue. But due to technical reasons, I couldn't make it this time. So, the return of Saigami is delayed a little bit. To make up for that, I'm gonna have a longer installment than usual. Yeah, and of course, you will be able to read uh, the new Summer of Manga entries. For example, Grimheim's Avant Shot will be in the issue. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading that. It's gonna be pretty cool. Like, the Summer of Manga entries were really good in issue 88 too, and so was the other series, Hammer, Attack, Attack on Titan, no, Titan King, <laughs> I'm mixing up the Titan titles. <laughs> yeah, Titan King has way better graphics than Attack on Titan. Where was I? Christian, uh, hey, are you using a Wacom Cintiq or is it a different brand? It's an XP Pen 16, no, 15.6. Yeah, it's an XP Pen 15.6 driving display, screen, tablet, monitor, whatever it is, but yeah, it's not a Wacom Cintiq. That's too expensive. And this is just as fine as a Wacom Cintiq for me. It has a high ses pressure sensitivity and all the good stuff. It's way cheaper than a Wacom. If you're interested about it more in details, I did an unboxing and a review video on my channel, so you can check that. That video will have the links and everything you might need.
Um, so Jack dude, Horiko should destroy Nakama power. Lol, <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, he's he's kind of destroying everything that was cliche in Shonen, and I can't say I'm not enjoying it. Like it's really refreshing to see all the changes he's making. And it's kind of fun because his previous series, uh, Paraj, I think, I think that was the title. Like, that was so cliche. And it's amazing to see how much he improved. And how he probably find his voice. So yeah, Hero Academy is great. For sure. Just checking my own hand to make sure I'm doing things right. Yeah, that's how you use references. <laughs> Just check your own hand if you're not sure. E3. <laughs> it's always in your reach, I guess. Oh my god, it's getting late. I'm just rambling. Um, let's see. Zami 9, we don't talk about that. Why not? <laughs> uh, Buka Manga, hello Sunny. Hello! Nice to see you here again. The Great Cornholio, hi. Hi, uh, Mr. George dude, I have both volumes of Burge on my desk. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's good. I mean, the art was pretty good and I, I actually enjoyed it because, you know, it had the potential. It just didn't live up to it. And it was murdered early on. I guess for the best. Because had it continued, we might not have have Hero Academia today, so yeah. If you have to pick between Barrage and Hero Academia, definitely Hero Academia. This is a very, very awkward pose to cut off her legs. Because, yeah, good advice when it comes to composition and cropping. It's very awkward to crop the character in the waist area or at the knees, basically at the joints. Because that will, I don't know, feel kind of awkward and might result in the artwork looking a little bit off. Because it kind of cuts off. Of balance, I guess. I'm not sure how to phrase it, but yeah, usually when you're you have to crop the character for a shot or a panel, be sure not to cut the character in the joint area, like hips, knees, shoulder above the shoulders. Like that's just the worst. Like that's like a beheaded character. So short, quick advice. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's not my best work of Ayumi for sure. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm I'm a little bit tired. But yeah, the main point of this artwork is actually her using her fire powers, and so far we can't see the fire, so <laughs> I should be focusing on that. So I'm gonna create a new layer. 
and this time I'm gonna be adding the fire. So basically, when it comes to drawing fire traditionally, um, you know the trick is that fire should look like if it's in motion, like you know, wavy motions will help you, but it also has the edges. So it's basically just a combination of those, it's style, not like this. So the way I really like to draw fire is doing a big wavy motion like this and make sure you add some of those sharp edges. So, you know, drawing fire like this is kind of making it look childish, but if you try to in phases or imitate the movement of the flames, like, you know, it's, ever, it's, a, it's a sort of wavy movement how flames just go. I, I don't know. <laughs> My English is failing me right now, but but yeah, you know, this, this sort of wavy movement. Of course, you know, if, if you're talking about fire like this, like the childish fire, it has the same motion, but um, if you try to include that the shape of fire is always changing because it's not a solid shape, of course. So if you, you try to include or imitate that sort of movement, it can help. Of course, you probably will need a lot of practice and it won't look right of the bat good necessarily. I often just, you know, draw the shape and ink it some other way because it just doesn't feel that good. But yeah, maybe emotions, sharp edges. It's hard to put in the words. Of course, I can recommend to look up other manga that has fire drawings a lot. For example, Fairy Tale, obviously Natsu. <laughs> I, I think Hiromashima draws the flame effect pretty good, I didn't like it. So, yeah, I, I did a lot of studies uh, with flames from Fairy Tale. So, I'm going back to my sketch layer, and what I want is to have the flames coming from her hand, have a bigger bulk of fires here, going around here, and then another block of flame going from here to here-ish, I guess. Yeah, even if the pose is not dynamic, having the flames around Ayumi probably will bring a little bit more liveliness into the artwork, hopefully. I see Miko looks great. I like her fierce look. Thank you. Well, it's kind of like, you know, her practice pose or before shooting of fire bolts pose. So I guess the fierce look was kind of needed. Of course, she's not too intimidating, let's be honest about that, but <laughs> that's just the person who she is. Uh, look, Amanga, get myself an into a Spro paper edition at last. So working on pen drawing by watching your live chat. Oh, that's pretty cool. Congrats on that. I I always love to work with my intos. Of course, it's not the paper edition. I got, but yeah, that's that's cool. Um. See, where was I? So shabby. I'm drawing traditionally with pen and paper and I'm hoping to go to move to digital art. What would be a good way to get into digital art? Um, first I will recommend you to get a cheaper tablet. Um, because first of all you will have to see if it's good for you, if you can get used to it. So I wouldn't jump into high expenses at first. Like, uh, when I first got my very, very first tablet, it was the cheapest I could get. Because A, I didn't have the finances because I was still in school. B, I wasn't even sure if digital will be a thing for me. And I struggled with digital art for 
quite some time so so yeah I, it, it was hard I couldn't get used to it I still can't work on my pages digitally because even though I'm, I'm comfortable drawing like this I, I, I enjoy coloring digitally but I just can't get the same feeling as you know inking on paper I wish I could sketch digitally than ink traditionally of course I could do that if I had a printer here with me and I don't because you know sketching digitally is way more comfortable but inking for me nothing beats traditional inking it's just it just means it might be just me but yeah so first of all I would recommend you to check uh, out uh, cheaper tablets if you want to go for a screen display that's okay too. Many just can't get used to drawing on a tablet and looking at the monitor at the same time. Admittedly, I had problems with that too. Like I, I had so much trouble inking like that or drawing like that. So for me, switching to a screen display was the solution, and I'm way, way more comfortable with digital art, art like this. Um, but yeah, this can be pretty expensive. Of course, you can get some cheaper versions. For example, I did a review on the Picasso Simmons tab. Simmons Picasso tab, yeah, that's the right name of it. Uh, that could be a good gateway uh, tablet to see if you can get used to digital art. Of course, it's uh, it's not as good as, for example, these uh, screen displays. But yeah, you, you can find smaller versions of this. Like, I know XP Pen has a 13 point three or something like that which is like half of the size and obviously it's cheaper so maybe something like that but yeah start start with something cheaper and see if it works for you or not um Mr. So dude I know spent 15 minutes on thinking up what kind of timeline my manga will take place in I think I'm just gonna go with something completely different like not so realistic yeah, coming with something not so realistic can, can help. But at least I find myself enjoying fantasy or sci-fi settings because you have more freedom. I'm gonna rotate the canvas so I can get the right motion. Also, whenever I'm drawing fire, I do these lines kind of uh, imitating emotions, and I do draw this sort of small, I don't know, ashes, embers, whatever, the small sparkles, I don't know what they're called, but <laughs> I hope you get it, even inside the fire or next to the fire, the small particles will help you get a sense of motion. Sammy 9, just finishing up the sketch. Daily drawing is hard, but I'm getting used to it. Uh, yeah, daily drawing is, is a really good thing. Once you get the hang of it, get the habit, it's super useful. It'll help you big time, I'm sure. Especially when it comes to discipline to do art every day. Very hard. Um, Zami9, Mr. Jog Dude, do what you like as long as you can enjoy it. Otherwise, it wouldn't have any heart. Yeah, that's true. I can only agree. If you could make something that you would want to read, then it would feel much more alive. I can only agree. Golden Nuggets there. It's a really good idea. Uh, 
Um, Mr. Jerk Dude, lol. I always been thinking about what others want to read. Well, I think first of all, you have to find something you want to read. Like, you know, think about what you would enjoy. Later on, of course, you can think about the readers, but at first, focus on something you would enjoy. That's how I started, for example, I know that. I wanted to do a story that I wanted to read. Of course, be sure it's not fanboyish or fangirlish too much. But yeah, if, if you truly believe it's, it's good and it's something you would enjoy, then I think it's hard to... it's easier to put heart into that art story uh, so I mean I, I guess they matter too maybe yeah absolutely the readers matter especially if you're working for a publication already you have to pay attention for the readers like obviously they should be the most important but it doesn't mean that you have to follow your readers blindly but you have to take into consideration what the readers enjoy, listen to their feedback but just because your readers want something, it doesn't necessarily mean it serves the best for the story. And if you have read Bakuman, there was a really good story arc about this part, like... If you're a capable writer, you should be able to work on your story by combining what you want with the reader's desire or make sure that what you write pleases the readers even without fulfilling their wishes because you can't always do that What has been your toughest elemental magic to draw? I actually have more trouble with wind and air element. Like, you know, it's an impossible thing, so it's damn hard to do, for me at least. Um, of course, I try to draw it kind of similarly to fire, um, including dust effects and stuff like that, but still, it's, it's very hard for me to draw. And I'm sure it will give me trouble later on because um, there will be some different variations to fire, not fire, wind or air element usage I plan to use. I, I don't want to spoil anything but yeah I will have some trouble because it's hard to draw something that's invisible but have an effect on the surroundings or in the environment. So that's a little bit tricky. I'm adding some black parts. Um, I don't plan to ink this drawing really, but since it's a uh, a guidance on how to draw flames. I included this technique as well because whenever I'm working on flames in black and white, I do add these black flames inside the flames. Does that make any sense? I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, it will help um, make the fire feel more like fire. Like it also indicates. Uh, the various colors of the fire, the movements of the fly, fly fire. 
I really can talk. <laughs> it also can help you cover up mistakes. <laughs> Great Cornholio, what do you think is the hardest thing in general to draw? Um, I think it depends. I mean, everyone has their preferences. Um, like you know, I, I can say that. Oh, for me, like um, mechanical things are hard to draw, like robots, vehicles, like everything you name it. And someone might say that. Oh, they excel that they have find trees hard to draw so I think it depends on individual skill level and preferences for me it surely is the things I mentioned before like vehicles mechanical things things with many many small details like uh, if I had to draw sci-fi and I had to draw spaceships and things like that I don't think I would excel that like uh, sure, if if you put in effort, everything is doable, like everything is just a bunch of lines, <laughs> so everything can be drawn, but um, yeah, it's a bit further from my personal preferences, so I find those hard to draw. Um, if it's about comics in general, comics are very hard to find, uh, very hard to draw, so I find that doing comics on its own is very very hard because once you're doing it you will realize how much uh, of a work it is how different every phase of the work is like writing the story doing the planning the shots the angles speaking the right scenes speaking the right dialogue capturing the emotions everything it's it's a very complicated and complex process so I would say throwing comics in general is pretty hard um, but then again I I always feel like I enjoy drawing comics more than just doing individual artworks because in comics I have multiple pages multiple panels to capture something to tell a story it's harder to capture everything in just one picture like, I, I really wish I, I could do images that capture um, emotions, a sense of a place, a mood, with just one image. I, I feel at the moment I don't think so that I can capture things when it comes to comic drawing, but there you have the context with the previous pages, the page following, but there are artists that are just so incredible, like, I look at a single image of them and I see the story. And I really wish to reach that level. There are many artists I follow because it's just incredible what they do. For example, there's a... I think it's, he's a Chinese artist. Uh, Vlop or Wlop is the username. And... Uh, God, he, he creates digital paintings and... They are incredible. Like every single image has a different story. I know they are part of a web comic, but but still, you look at the image and 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 you can see the heart and the story. And I, I found it really hard to capture feelings, emotions, story, and mood in just one image. 
So I really wish I can improve on that front. And of course on many others where I'm lacking, because I'm still improving myself. I might be a published comic creator, but there's always place for improvement. And I'm always trying my best to improve, learn new things. Make sure I can create content better and better with every chapter I publish. Um, Link Slicer. Hey Andrea, sorry I'm late. I was doing errands for a friend. Hi, nice to see you again. I think it's okay. I mean, you can watch the first part of the video later on. Uh, hi, see you, Miko, at the Ink Slicer. Hi, I thought it was weird you weren't here yet, especially since you also requested something. <laughs> yeah, it feels like you were missing, like... <laughs> it's weird not to have the usual faces around, I guess. Um, the Ink Slicer, how many requests did you get to so far? Uh, this is basically the second request. I, I won't be able to do all of the requests. So I'm, I'm sorry about that, but I will be driving here till the morning if I were to take all of the requests. But there will be a live stream again. Probably not this week. Because I have pages to work on. But next week I will have another live stream and I will do more requests and more studies. And what you want me to draw, like I'm always Looking forward to reading your comments, your feedback. And you know, these live streams are supposed to be interactive and I want to create content you want to see. Um, I see Miko, this is the second one. It will probably be the last one for today. Thanks, Sir Okul. I remember seeing a little bit of the stream and it was a French comic request. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was the radiant one. Um, I see Yumiko requested this one because of the fire. Looks super beautiful in here. Andrea, your fire strokes are so smooth. I'm so jealous. Gotta practice more. <laughs> Thank you. Well, practice. Look at preference images. Like I said, I studied a lot of fairy tale, but also different manga. And I tried to figure out how to do fire on my own. So yeah, it took some time. Like, if you look at the early pages of Saigami, you can see that they didn't look like this in the beginning. Especially if you can find my old pages, Ooh, those, those look terrible. <laughs> Not the ones in the first volume, but the very, very old pages of Saigami. They are only in Hungary, and so... Yeah. Hopefully no one will see those ever again. <laughs> but yeah, I think fire are pretty easy to draw once you get the hang of it. So is everything, I guess, so are hands, like, I enjoy drawing hands now. Even though, back in the day, I used to struggle with them. But now I enjoy drawing hands. The same goes for fire and everything, just... Look for references, look for material to practice from. And learn, and try to combine it to make sure you get the hang of it, and you can use it as your own. Um, Link Slicer, some of my favorite things to draw are prehistoric animals, cars from the 50s to 70s, and tactical and military Z things. Vests, guns, helmets, gears. Wow. Like, yeah, those are things I don't really feel comfortable with. Like, prehistoric animals, maybe I, like, I enjoyed driving dinosaurs when I was a kid. <laughs> but yeah, for example, your preferences are are my weaknesses, so it's it's pretty interesting to see how something can be so easy for someone. And yeah, I lost my chance of thoughts here, but y you get the gist of it, I guess. <laughs> uh, manga. so do you have a lot of script already written for Saigami, or do you do a little skip and a little drawing? I uh, usually like to focus on the installment I'm working on, but of course I plan things in advance, so right now I'm working on pages for the last part of chapter 16. I already have the script written till the end of the initiation arc, so 
so yeah I'm working ahead because you know if you want to do proper foreshadowing and things like that you need to work in advance with your script of course I might change things around a little bit I did that a bunch of times like I have the script but as I'm working on the story where I realize that I can do things better I can do a bit of a twist I can do the story better so I'm changing things so I have to change the, the, the script as well so usually I'm not working that much ahead I in this case I worked so much ahead with the script uh, to wrap up the initiation arc to see how I can fit things into the third volume because I want to wrap up the initiation arc in the third volume and start a new arc. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much about that but but yeah in order to do that I had to see how much chapters I still need to use for wrapping up the initiation arc. Um, Sir Shabby, what tips do you have on doing manga eyes? Every time I attempt to draw eyes I just can't get them right. Yeah, eyes can be tricky. Um, I'm gonna do her eyes. <laughs> I'm talking about that. Um, I find for me an easy way is uh, doing the guidelines for the face so that will have maybe the eyes and um, I find it easier to first uh, draw the shapes of the eyes so at first I'm only doing these two shapes and not the iris not the pupils and you know I, from this I can see if it's a level if it's uh, the right proportions so it's easier and, and I only fill in the iris later on and even after I filled in the iris I'm um, not filling in the pupils like usually I just do that in the very last moment and I find that helping me of course you know when you're doing different angles that can be very tricky especially when um, you know if it's if it's a, a very very sideways like you know for example if this is the, the forehead here is the nose of the character the rest of the face and you will have one eye here but it's barely visible like you can see the lashes but it's just some part of the eye and you will he have the other eye here but since the face is almost in profile you will have to, to change the eye or the shape of the eye around that way and, you know it, it can be tricky depending on the angles and this is very sketchy and very rough but I hope you get the gist of it that but still if they are in level you can use your guidelines and use references like uh, you know look in the mirror look at your face look at your eyes can help you find the right balance for the eyes and uh, try to draw turnarounds like you know just start with the face facing in the middle to the eyes then try to turn the head a little bit around this way try to see how the eyes go like this try to try different things like do studies. Um, I find that this is something you can only improve with practice. So practice, practice, practice. And do quality practice, like look up preferences, look up uh, studies of other people. I know there are a bunch of uh, uh, videos and tutorials on how to draw heads and eyes from different angles. I also did a video on how to draw heads and I had one about different uh, manga eyes where I drew eyes from manga series. Uh, first of all you have to have the balance right with the anatomy of the eyes and then you can come up with your own style of drawing eyes in the way that's most fitting for you. You know some eyes are very simple like you know just the basic Dragon Ball eye is basically like this. like. The kid Goku's eyes are this, or this could be as well Pokemon eyes. Some eyes are pretty complex, like especially if it's about shoujo eyes, like they can be so complex. So, so yeah, practice, look for references, do studies, search for your own style, and and you'll get there. I know it's very hard to draw the other eyes. I'm suffering about that a lot. But, you know, you can always flip the canvas and or just turn your page and see through the light. 
um, to see if it's all right. Even today, I many, 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 many times mess up the eyes because it, it's just hard to draw, and you just need to search for the mistake and see if you can improve things. And it can help if you're working digitally. Like you can see, I flip the canvas so I can draw her facing that way because I find it I have an easier time drawing face facing that way instead of having her look the other way around. So that's also something that can help me and maybe can help you too. Um, Rovdy Games TV. Uh, can you draw muscular bodies? Uh, I plan to do studies on that because that's an area I need to improve myself because usually my style is not that uh, muscular when it comes to bodies. So I plan to do uh, studies on various poses of muscular bodies. So I, I plan to do that. Um, as for Rody Games, do you like white manga New World by Cassie? Oh uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. I, I enjoyed reading it, so I'm looking forward to reading more. And I know how much work I put into this series, so I can only recommend it for everyone to check it out. And the art is incredible. Like there was that shot with the fish eye lens view, or what it's called, fish eye perspective. That, that's incredible, like... This one blows my mind so many times. Uh, Chicano 250. Oh no, it's the beginning. Um, I'm happy you're here anyway, and you know, you can always rewatch the first part. After the live stream is ended, I'm gonna upload the video, so you can catch up later on. Manga, you are doing a great job and it is really nice that you keep in touch with those that enjoy your art. Thank you! Well, I enjoy this a lot, admittedly. And, you know, part of my reason is to, to get to people with my art and my stories. And, and, you know, I always appreciate any comment, feedback or messages I'm receiving from people who enjoy my artwork, read my stories. Because, you know, that's, that's the purpose. I'm, I'm doing it. I wanted to reach people with my stories. And it's incredible to, to be able to, you know, sit here, do art, and have many people from around the world join me in this process. And, and you know, it's, it's incredible if I can inspire others to improve, help them. And, and I enjoy it greatly. Uh, Riva says hi. Hi Riva. Link Slicer. I also have a real love for monsters and horror based creatures, which is probably why I like Bekassi a lot more than sh than I should. Oh, that's, that's okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> Bekassi's word is wow. It's pretty impressive even. And it has an interesting new tone. OG list. Uh, I'm back. Wow, that's that looks so cool. Is it from Saigami? Yeah, this is Ayumi from Saigami. Using her fire powers in a not so dynamic pose. But still, she's using fire. <laughs> and that was the main point. And yeah. I might as well ink a little bit more of her, I guess. Sorry, the eyes. Yeah, it's... I have to fix that. See? I can undo the eyes. Even though I have the sketch, it's... It's just not right for the first try. So 
don't be afraid to search for mistakes, do changes, erase parts if you need, draw it again if you need. That's how you improve and grow as an artist. Um, Dink Slicer, speaking of dinosaurs, has Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom come in Hungary? Yep, I already seen it. Um, it was different. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil anything for those who haven't seen it yet. Um, it was enjoyable. There was a part where I, I almost ended up crying. If you've seen the movie, you probably know what part. Um, that was really well done. I think like that, that was a truly emotional part and... Yeah. Uh, other than that, I, I enjoyed Jurassic World more than Fallen Kingdom. Um, yeah, I, I'm really interested where the story will go from here on. And Baby Blue is the most adorable thing ever, like... I know they are killers and all, but I want a baby raptor, like... Oh my god, they, they are super cute, and Baby Blue is amazingly cute. Uh, Chicano... Sunny, would you ever go for a Saigami Project anime? Oh, sure! I would love that. <laughs> uh, obviously. Uh, I think I said this in my previous live stream. Um, uh, I'm creating a new layer. Um, having an anime never really was my dream. Like, I always wanted to have my stories published as a book. Because, I don't know, maybe I'm old school, but I always felt like the book is more in value than a series or something. Um, so yeah, for me, getting a comic book published in book format, in print format, was always more important than aiming for an anime or animation. But yeah, having a side game anime will be damn good. Like, you know, seeing the characters in motion, having the events with music, uh, with voice actors, like, you know, every now and then I I just think about which voice actors I would pick for my characters and what kind of music I would love to have for the series and things like that, so, so yeah, that would be really great and I like to daydream about it, but I guess so is everyone, like, everyone who's driving is probably thinking about their stories their characters in motion as well. That's, that's, that is really cool. And you know, sometimes I'm even thinking about it. You know, if Saigami had an anime, there are songs that I totally would love to make AMVs for. <laughs> because AMVs used to be a passion of mine back in the day. Uh, I'm still watching a couple of them whenever I have the chance. But I, I used to edit and cut AMBs myself, so so yeah, that, that would be nice. Of course, now I don't have the time for them anymore. But yeah, let's see what the future brings. You know, Saturday AM has huge plans, so be prepared for editing. Uh, Zami Knight says... I'd watch that, or maybe audition as Reggie's voice actor. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so familiar with English voice actors, so I never really thought about uh, but who I would pick for English dub. Because, you know, I, I know who I would pick for Hungarian dub. <laughs> and... I'm almost sure who I'd like to choose for a Japanese dub if it ever became a thing. <laughs> but yeah, having auditions and stuff would be really cool. Um, 
Um, let's see, the ink slicer. Funny enough, it hasn't come in the States yet. Really? Like, wow, that's weird. I thought it was playing already worldwide. I mean, I know that Hungary usually receives uh, movies a bit earlier than uh, the States or other countries. But yeah, I've seen it like, I don't know, like on the 7th of June. Of course, I, I've seen it pretty early because it was right before the premiere day, I think. And there were so many people in the theaters. it take for you to draw and publish volume, ad, volume 1 SP? Uh, I'm not really sure about the question. <laughs> so if, if you could ask it again, I, I can see that you have a few typos here but I'm really not sure what's the question here so, so please. Or maybe I'm just getting tired, I, I don't know. Slayer, Slayer. Yep. I'm letting the part to the hair here, to the fire. And I'm letting this part. Ah, uh, Bukamanga says, My daughter, almost two years old, lost a Blew the raptor on the cereal box. <laughs> that must be cute. Oh gosh, I never saved this. Oh, I so many IMF files. Um, Boniface Onyakeva. I think they meant how long it took you to write and publish the second volume one. Oh, okay. Um, let's see, I started to draw the first chapter in 2013. I think it was in... I started it in February and in or maybe March. I know I drew the first couple of pages in the hospital because I spent a whole month in hospital in that time and I started to draw the first pages there and uh, it was published in 2014 in May I think so completing the first volume was a bit over oh, almost a year and a half I think yeah let's go with a year and a half the second volume took a bit more time uh, of course, I put more effort into the art, and yeah, I was a bit slower. Many things happened in my private life, like, you know, in the first year when I was published in Saturday AM, I put in a lot of effort to make sure I can be in almost every issue. And uh, yeah, after the first volume, I started to work on the second, obviously, but uh, a few chapters in the story there was, uh, yeah, I had some private issues, there was a huge change in my life. And, uh, and yeah, for, for that time period, I had to go on a hiatus to make sure I can settle everything. I basically started my life anew, so yeah. <laughs> I moved several times and things like that, so. So that delayed the release of volume 2 quite a while, so it was published last November. So yeah, there was... There was two years, I think. 
a bit more than two years. I think, I don't know, I, I suck at math at the moment. <laughs> Okay, I uh, I don't think I will finish this artwork. So I'm kind of getting sluggish here, and inking the rest of Ayumi will take a lot of time because yeah, and I think this has been going on for quite a while now. So so I guess I'm gonna stop it because I still have to work on some pages. But yeah, I. I wanted to put the emphasis on the fire effects here, and I have that. And at least the fire is inked, and partially I is. So I guess I'm gonna finish this up some other time. And uh, Zamina and sketch done. I'm tired. Hope to see your next stream. Bye. Yeah, thank you for joining, and bye. And yeah, I guess this has been going on for quite a long time, so. I should call it a day. Um, I will have another live stream next week. I don't know the date yet, but I will sh I will try to make sure that I will announce it in time. Like that's on the day of the live stream. Um, once again, if you want to be notified, hit the notification bell uh, on my YouTube channel, and you can follow my social media. You can see the links or where you can find me in the corner, and you will be able to find the links in my profile. You can check out Saturday AM, Saigami will return soon. And yeah, I will take more requests. So thank you very much for joining me tonight. And I see you in my next live stream. 